Right now is day one for the trial for one of the two people accused in a shooting near a Madison High School last fall. We'll have updates from the courtroom. And the Trump administration is pushing an immigration rule change that could make it harder to gain citizenship for people using government assistance programs. From the Channel3000.com Alert Center, this is News 3 Now at Noon. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Mark Kane. Thanks for tuning in to News 3 on this Tuesday. Start thinking up your pet questions because Dr. DeMorvik will be along to take your calls coming up within this half hour. Humid, a chance for some showers today. Let's head to the Weather Center. Meteorologist Dave Caulfield has a look at your first alert forecast. Hi, Dave. Hey, Mark. We started out once again on a foggy note across southern Wisconsin. That has lifted, but we're still left with that humidity and the chance for some showers and storms. Already seeing some storms across portions of Duno, uh, Juneau and Adams County and some light showers across uh, Sauk and Columbia counties. We are seeing some peaks of sunshine in Madison on the WIC TV Skycam, but that will change, I think, by the time we get to later this afternoon. We'll call it mostly cloudy at the airport. Temperatures in the mid-70s, north wind at 3 miles per hour, the dew point in the mid-60s. So that's still some pretty uncomfortable air that is left here. Temperatures are in the mid-70s, generally a couple of 80s showing up in Janesville and Boscobel. Dew points are in the 60s and mid-70s in spots like Platteville. So that humidity is with us today and for portions of tomorrow as well. Well, we could see some showers and thunderstorms later this afternoon into the evening and then into Wednesday. Some more showers and storms could be in the cards. We'll talk about improvement on the way on Thursday and some warmer and more humid air on uh, the weekend in your first alert forecast. Again with the humidity. Yeah, uh, it's uh, summer's not done yet. <laughs> well, Don't that's mistake good. it. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll take it. Yeah. Thank you, Dave. We'll see you in a few minutes. The trial is underway for a Madison man accused of shooting a 16 year old in a neighborhood near La Follette High School last September. Police say 21 year old Dwayne Briggs brought a handgun to a prearranged fight. He faces two felony charges, attempted first degree intentional homicide and first degree recklessly endangering safety. 17-year-old Jamie Hayes is also facing felony charges for attempted homicide and endangering safety. His trial is scheduled to begin next month. A drone helped Janesville police find a man wanted for slashing more than a dozen vehicle tires. This happened in the 1000 block of Borchard Avenue near the Janesville Water Utility Building. A neighbor confronted the suspect and he ran off. At first, officers couldn't find him but saw him trying to hide by lying in a nearby creek. Police arrested 53-year-old Jerry Van Cannon last night after a short chase. Local law enforcement is encouraging more people to install home security devices like the Ring doorbell to help prevent crime. The Dane County Sheriff's Office does not promote any particular home security system, but more and more sheriff and police departments are partnering with the Ring app and the Ring doorbell app. Homeowners who have this installed in their homes can capture surveillance video and give the video to lo local law enforcement to help them solve or deter crimes. It's something the Dane County Sheriff says works well. At the end of the day, it's about solving crimes that, that have been committed and through the knowledge of this technology, hopefully preventing future crimes from occurring. If the bad guys know that this type of technology has, has aided law enforcement in solving crimes, it may prevent them from com committing their crimes in the first place. Those who have the app are and are members of the Ring Neighborhood Service can help in future investigations or emergencies. You have until December 15th to buy electronics before they're subject to a 10% tariff. President Trump announced earlier this month a new import tax impacting cell phones, toys and video games from China. That was supposed to take effect September 1st, but it's now been delayed until mid-December. Trump administration officials hope it's, that'll allow more time to come to a deal so the tariffs don't have to go into effect at all. Meanwhile, President Trump has moved ahead with a rule change that could make it harder for legal immigrants to become U.S. citizens. The Trump administration is expanding the definition of the public charge rule, making it harder for immigrants to become permanent residents if they're likely to use government assistance, including Medicaid, food stamps, and subsidized housing. The government estimates about 382,000 immigrants will be impacted by this rule each year. And what we're looking for here are uh, people who are going to live with us either their whole lives or ultimately become citizens uh, who can stand on their own two feet. If you are not white and wealthy, the United States is no longer a welcoming nation. 
The National Immigration Law Center is suing to block the rule, claiming it's racially motivated. President Trump has long said America should have a merit-based immigration policy. Critics say this rule change is a step in that direction. More local news now. The Wisconsin Elections Commission is considering spending up to $810,000 to upgrade local clerks' computer security systems. The commission staff has warned that lots of clerks use outdated computer systems or aren't installing security patches, leaving Wisconsin's elections system vulnerable to potentially devastating cyber attacks. Staff has also recommended buying software that can test clerks' vulnerability remotely or loaning clerks up-to-date computers. The money would also go toward an outreach program to dispel myths about election security. Minnesota's health officials are reporting more cases of young people experiencing severe lung damage linked to vaping. They're investigating four cases right now and say they are similar to recent cases reported in Wisconsin and Illinois. Minnesota's health department is asking health care providers and parents to be on the lookout for vaping as a cause for unexplained breathing problems. And a first alert traffic note now, Rugger Avenue in Janesville will be closed under the interstate tonight for girder settings. It's part of a I-3990 expansion project. The closure is from 7 o'clock tonight until 6 o'clock tomorrow morning. East Milwaukee Street will be closed under the interstate from 12 a.m. to 6 a.m. Thursday as crews pour the bridge deck. And there's more to come on News 3 Now at noon. Up next, we'll see what Howard's working on in the Mr. Food Test Kitchen. Join us as we turn spuds into donuts. That'll have you saying, ooh, it's so good. A few months ago, while I was visiting Portland, Maine, I came across this little donut shop, and they had a line wrapped around the block. You know, I thought to myself, how good could these donuts be? I later found out that these just weren't run-of-your-mill donuts. They were potato donuts, and they were addictive. So if you're ready, let me show you how to make my newfound treat. We start by creaming some butter and sugar until it's fluffy. To that, 
we add an egg, and a touch of vanilla. Now, for what makes these truly unique, we add some freshly mashed potatoes, along with some buttermilk. Once it's smooth, we add our dry ingredients and mix it just to the point where our dough comes together. After flattening this to about a half an inch thick, we cut out our donut shapes using a drinking glass and the cap from a water bottle, or easier yet, a donut cutter if you have one. We fry them for a few minutes until they puff up and are golden. Then we drain them on a wire rack. After they cool, spoon on a simple powdered sugar glaze and finish them off with anything from mini chocolate chips to sprinkles. To get the recipe for our old fashioned potato donuts, like the ones I got in Maine, simply visit our website. I'm Howard in the Mr. Food Test Kitchen, where today we found a pleasantly surprising way for you to say, ooh, it's so good. All right, Howard, thank you. You may want to keep the rain jacket on hand today. And all week, for that matter, we'll have shower and thunderstorm chances in the forecast through Sunday. Dave will have all the details coming up in your first alert forecast. The cost of living in the United States is on the rise and a labor activist group is speaking up about certain Amazon home devices that may be manufactured illegally by teenagers. Diane King Hall has your Money Watch reports. Stocks flip-flopped at the start of a new session on Wall Street. Traders initially kicked off the day lower following moves in the bond market before firmly trading higher. The cost of living in the U.S. rose in July. According to the Labor Department, consumer prices ticked up three-tenths of a percent. Rising costs for gas, housing, clothing, and medical expenses pushed prices higher. Food costs were flat, and overall inflation has been fairly subdued despite rising trade tensions between the U.S. and China. 
A new report alleges some Amazon home devices could be illegally manufactured by teenagers in China. Labor activist group China Labor Watch says teenage students put in 10-hour days, six days a week to make Amazon's Echo smart speakers. The e-commerce giant says it is investigating the allegations and addressing the report with Foxconn, which manufactures the devices. And Nike is launching a sneaker subscription service. Nike Adventure Club is a Netflix-like service for kids ages 2 to 10. The goal is to help out parents who have to constantly buy new shoes for children's growing feet. Nike will offer three options, four pairs of sneakers a year for $20 a month, six pairs for $30 a month, or 12 pairs for 50 bucks a month. And that's your CBS Money Watch report. For more, head to cbsmoneywatch.com. At the New York Stock Exchange, I'm Diane Kinghall. Thank you, Diane. At the noon hour, the Dow Industrials up 424 points. The NASDAQ up 153. The S&P 500 up 48. Let's check in now with Q106 Farm Director Pam Yankee. She is in the radio barn. How are your numbers today? Not that robust. Holy man, they're on a tear. Well, maybe they're putting their money out of commodities today to move it over there, Mark. Yesterday, we got that World Ag Supply Demand Report, and although the numbers have been in the marketplace now for better than 24 hours' time, they're still trying to digest it. What it reported, a record number of 19 million acres estimated that did not get planted this year, about 11 million acres of corn that did not get planted, about 4.4 million acres of soybeans that did not get planted. So we saw corn and wheat take a nosedive yesterday. Why? Because we still have ample supplies of corn on hand. Today, the markets are continuing to go down because they have to try to get a sense of what the real world value is on corn. We've got plenty of it in the United States, but there's plenty of it around the world. So trying to get a real value on the corn that we're producing right now is what the market's working on. And like I said, you see it's down uh, between 10 and 15 cents again on the midday. The other news that's out today has to do with Wisconsin agriculture. Uh, new information that's been refreshed courtesy of the University Extension Service and Dairy Farmers of Wisconsin show that Wisconsin agriculture, despite challenging economic times, is still growing. $104.8 billion in Wisconsin agriculture, making it the number one economic driver in the state again. 435,000 jobs directly related, related to agriculture. That's 12% of all jobs available. And of course, our dairy industry is specific value part of that 157,000 jobs directly connected with dairy if you want to see the whole uh, breakout on this newly revised information based on the 2017 ag census go to wisconsindairy.org or fabulousfarmbabe.net we've got it up there i know it's been 2017 data but it's still pertinent despite the challenges we're seeing out there barrel and black cheese unchanged today double a butter up a quarter at 234 a pound i'm trying to get 10 pounds in a five pound sack today mark because this is it for farm babe on our way to alaska for the farm tour and uh won't see you again until september all right. Well, have a great trip. Have fun. Thank you. Thanks. We'll see you in September. Dave's here now with a look at our August forecast. Yes, so uh, we have uh, more rain chances on the way throughout much of this week. I think Thursday we'll get a dry day and temperatures will be in the 70s, plenty of sunshine. So that's a day going to circle on the calendar. The rest will at least feature some semblance of rain chances. And we did see uh, some rain across southern Wisconsin over the last 24 hours, but not as much as we could have. Remember, we were watching at least for the potential of some pretty heavy rain over the last couple of days. Well, yesterday came and went and we did see some isolated spots with about an inch of rain, but the spots that really got the very heavy rain were closer to St. Louis across portions of Missouri and southern Illinois. We're seeing some showers and storms right now across Juneau and Adams County. Some shades of yellow and orange, also some red there. So some heavier downpours moving through right now and moving to the south and east. And some light showers showing up in some other spots. We'll watch for that coverage to increase over the next hour or so. That humidity is still in place, so that's going to help uh, create some more showers over the next few hours. On Doppler track, that's really the only game in town, but expect multiple rounds of showers and storms to be rolling through 
across southern Wisconsin today. So we'll probably need that umbrella for this afternoon and evening right on the cusp there. So better to be safe than sorry. And I think we uh, should be dry for portions of the overnight hours, but then by the time we get into tomorrow, some more showers and thunderstorms possible before that dry day arrives on Thursday. Our time lapse in Madison. We saw another start to the day filled with fog and that fog has moved out, dissipated, lifted, whatever word you want to use over the last couple of hours as temperatures have warmed up. And speaking of those thunderstorms, we're looking at a nice cumulonimbus cloud forming right basically above our heads here at the WIC TV studios uh, on our sky cam here. So we'll watch that closely again. Some storms that do form today, especially across southwestern Wisconsin, could be a little bit on the strong side. Platteville on our Queen Bee Radio sky cam looking at partly sunny skies. Visibility much better compared to just a few hours ago. Temperatures are in the mid to upper 70s. A few 80s showing up like in Janesville. Dew points are in the mid 60s. More humid across southwestern Wisconsin. Thus the higher chances for some strong to possibly even severe storms. Now as we head into uh, the rest of future track for today, multiple rounds of showers and storms on the way. So have that umbrella ready to go on Wednesday. More raindrops could be in the cards for some of us slightly less uh, good chances for rain compared to today, but we still can't take any chances with this much humidity in the air. Highs near 70 for tomorrow, so cooler as we head into Thursday. I think we get that sunshine back and temperatures back into the mid 70s. So our future track precipitation generally looking at about a quarter to a half an inch of rain across southern Wisconsin, but you can see there is downpour potential here with this much humidity. So there will be some isolated spots that get more than that. Seven to 10 day forecast. We're looking at the 80s returning for this weekend, more humid as well with chances for showers and storms, especially on Saturday and the 80s stick around into next week as well. Yeah, with all this humidity, something's got to give. Exactly. <laughs> all it takes is somebody to sneeze. That's right. Just look at it the wrong way and exactly. it's going to rain. <laughs> all right, Dave, thank you. Next afternoon, Dr. Jim Orvick is here from the Oregon Vet Clinic. He's taking your calls at 270-9933. We'll get to your calls right after this.
Dr. Jim Orvick from the Oregon Vet Clinic is here taking your calls at 270-9933. Good to see you again. Good to be you, here. You've been to Greece since we last saw you. Yes, sir. What an exciting trip. It, it was. I learned a lot of ancient history. There's a lot of that over there. Yes, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> All right, let's get to the phones. We'll start with Billy from Madison. Hi, Billy. Hi. Um, I just wanted to ask Doctor if uh, what he thinks is a reasonable fee for cleaning a cat's teeth. I think my son was quoted something in the neighborhood of $500. Is that exorbitant or does that sound reasonable to him? These days, probably not so bad. Not uh, so bad? Yeah. Okay. Uh, when I first started doing it, it was about $25. Oh, wow. <laughs> that was a while ago. Yeah, yeah right. right. 40 years ago. But there's anesthesia involved. There's, oh, yeah. There's lots anesthesia, going on. Anesthesia, two or three people tied up. So, yeah, it's not, that's not too far off from Okay. It. And how, All right. how often should you do it? Oh, every dog is different. It's a cat. But or cat. And dog. Yeah. Same oh. thing. Some need it like once a month practically and right. others never need it then it's just like people you know yeah some good teeth some bad mm -hmm. all right let's go to randy in wisconsin dells hi randy hi hi which question uh, i've got uh, a few adult cats and uh they share uh one food and one water bowl and uh what they have developed is uh, a sneezing type of a cough mm -hmm. recently and I was wondering if, you know, what that might be, if it's serious, or uh, what you think. Yes, well, upper respiratory viruses are very common in cats, and the vaccine they get every year uh, has about three of them in there. And the immunity isn't very good to any of them, so they uh, needed their booster every year. But, and they can blow in through the windows and things, so even house cats seem to get them. But, uh, so, Probably not serious. Probably will run its course and everything will be fine. Okay. All right. We'll go to Tammy now in Janesville. Hi, Tammy. Hi. Um, one of my dogs, um, I don't know if it's allergies or something that's really bothering his feet. Um, he itches at them a lot and they're turning red. I was just wondering if there's something I could do. <laughs> hey, uh, is, how old is this dog? Uh, two and a half. Oh, and never done this before. No. Okay, well, most likely it's an allergic condition that he's starting up on and uh, probably something different this summer that uh, weed that there's more of that he's more allergic to than he has been in other summers. So uh, there are all kinds of things for dogs with itchy feet and I would definitely uh, call your vet or go to the pet store and, and uh, Lots Get of remedies out the there. Yeah. Stay in line if you're on there. Jim, thanks. Dave has one final check of the forecast. We have some showers and thunderstorms rolling through this afternoon and into this evening.